In this video, I want to talk about why it's actually important to idolize yourself as a form of personal development, especially if you are trying to have more self-love, more self-admiration, and become the coolest person you know. Hi everyone, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Erin, and this channel is all about becoming the coolest person you know so that you can live an extraordinary life and an extraordinary business. I came up with this concept of becoming the coolest person you know as an antidote to the self depreciation that so many women experience when they're trying to navigate life or they're trying to build a business. I'm a business mentor and I just work with so many women who have such a negative self perspective. The things that they say to themselves, the things that they believe that they can and cannot do because of their conditioning and because of their programming holds them back from truly being able to achieve extraordinary things in this lifetime. And so I came up with this concept of becoming the person you know, so that we could start just in very simple terms, seeing ourselves differently. You know, I know that self-love has been something that's been around for quite some time, but I think a lot of self-love content gets just lumped in with self-care content. Doing a manicure, going and getting a massage, treating yourself to a nice dinner. And don't get me wrong, those things are absolutely incredible. But the thing that is going to make the difference in your ability to be successful is your identity. What you believe to be true about yourself is the thing that is going to determine the actions that you take, the opportunities that you pursue, the conversations that you have, the goals that you set. And so how we perceive ourselves is such an important part of building an extraordinary life. I posted a reel recently with the title that said something along the lines of when you start to idolize yourself, you can become the coolest person you know and achieve everything you like. Now, don't get me wrong. I love loved this reel and so did a lot of people because it went viral, but what it actually welcomed was a lot of people really, really not agreeing with the concept of self idolization. Now I know why this is, and I wanted to clear this up in this video because I actually want you to idolize yourself. If we break down what the word idolize mean, it simply means to admire, you know, to love excessively. Why is that such a bad thing? The reason is because so many people believe that self idolization or admiring yourself or even becoming the coolest person you know is an exercise in egotism. You know, it leads to narcissistic behaviors. I want to clear this up. Loving yourself is not narcissistic. Loving yourself is crucial to live an extraordinary life. The difference between being narcissistic and self-love or becoming the coolest person you know or self-admiration or idolization is this. When you are narcissistic, you are putting your value above other people. You are actually basing your value on some kind of scale. In order for you to be good, somebody else needs to be bad. Self-idolization is not that. It is simply just saying, I myself am worthy. I am good enough. I am worthy of love. I am worthy of success. I am worthy of everything that I desire. It's looking at who we are and feeling proud of ourselves, looking at what we've achieved in good light rather than just thinking that it was luck or some kind of fluke. It's liking the way that we look. It's being happy with our appearance. And more importantly, it's that we feel worthy of all the things that we desire to create because that, my friend, really is the biggest thing that holds so many women back. It holds them back from going for opportunities, for asking for a raise, for starting businesses, for going and creating content in a convicted, positive, expert kind of way. You know, so many women are like, oh, I shouldn't say that, or who do I think I am? Or, you know, I can't say that because I don't have XYZ certificate or degree. Rather than really appreciating who we are, our story, and the things that we've been able to achieve in our lives. And so I like to use a lot of kind of controversial language because I think that we need a reclamation. I think we need a reclamation of things like self-idolization, 
situation. The word cool, you know, we look at everything else being like, that's so cool, that person's so cool, that influencer's so cool, that singer's so cool, that music's so cool, that mountain's so cool, all these things. We're constantly labeling everything outside of ourselves as inspirational, as cool, as a vibe. We need to turn that lens back on ourselves because here's the thing. If we truly learned to love ourselves, if we truly learned to see ourselves just as worthy as everything else that we're experiencing on this planet, we would do so much more. And honestly, when more women step into power, influence, accumulate wealth and abundance, when more mission-driven women have this kind of status, that truly is when the world is going to change. And so this video is going to be all about how to idolize yourself. I'm going to give you 10 steps on how to start idolizing yourself, how to start loving yourself, how to start really truly feeling like you are worthy of everything that you desire because you are. There is no difference between you and all of these other people that you put on a pedestal and compare yourself to. It's all a matter of perspective. And so your work in this lifetime is to change your perspective of yourself, to start seeing yourself as the incredible, extraordinary human being that you are. And this video is going to be 10 simple steps that you can start doing to reprogramming, deconditioning yourself to becoming the coolest person you know and idolizing yourself. So step one is using your words. Tell yourself that you are a vibe. You have to constantly be on top of those thoughts that are going on in your mind and catch yourself every single time that inner mean girl comes out and you start speaking negatively to yourself and rewrite that story. You might not believe it the first few times and that is okay. Change does not happen overnight. But the more positive things that you say to yourself, and you can do this in many different ways through journaling, through coaching, through mirror work, through tapping, through meditation, just through inner conversations and inner dialogues. However you choose to reprogram yourself, one of my personal favorites is through hypnosis. I like to record myself saying positive things to myself and then listen to them on repeat. But the more often that you can say positive things to yourself, tell yourself that you are a vibe, the more that you are actually rewriting and reprogramming those neural pathways that right now probably aren't that positive. And right now, because they're not positive, are probably keeping you stuck in procrastination and comparison and perfectionism. But the more that you get in the habit of being like, I can do this, I am good enough, I am a vibe, I am gorgeous, I am capable, I've done all these incredible things, the more that your subconscious will start to believe that and it will be like magic. You will start believing different things and when you believe different things, you think differently and you take different actions. When you take different actions, you get different results. It all starts with the way that you speak your, speak to yourself. So constantly tell yourself you are a vibe and watch the magic unfold. The second thing is to rebrand your life. There's so much inspiration out there. I'm sure right now, just like me, you have a Pinterest board full of things that you think are cool, that you think are worth idolizing, that you think are a vibe. And they're probably sitting on that Pinterest board and in your mind, it's a one day my life will be like that. The more that you can create your own life by rebranding your life, your home environment, your personal style, even the little moments throughout the day that you can romanticize. I'm sure you've got things of like, I don't know, someone reading a book in in a park or something or having a nice glass of wine at a restaurant. It's about the intention and the appreciation. When you rebrand your life and you do all of those things that you think, oh, one day I'll be worthy of doing them. Nope that. Do them now. Rebrand your life to look like your Pinterest boards and appreciate those moments. Appreciate how delicious and beautiful life actually is. Because the more that you create your life as a vibe, the more that you are going to idolize this experience that you have created for yourself rather than just constantly idolizing it for everyone else. And this goes back to point one, you have to believe that you are worthy of these things to take notice of them in the first place. But bring that awareness to all of those delicious moments in your day. And if you can't find 
find those delicious moments, then actually put the effort into creating those delicious moments. Go to a gorgeous cafe, actually catch up with a friend and I don't know, go make some art together. All of these things that you're watching on YouTube or seeing on Instagram, they are available to you. It's just about putting intention into it, taking action, feeling worthy, and then being grateful for those delicious moments. Another thing is put effort into your appearance. This is not supposed to be some shallow attempt or some capitalistic endeavor or some patriarchal desire. But when you feel good about yourself, you will idolize and admire yourself more. It does just take a little bit of effort. Dress yourself in a nice outfit instead of wearing sweatpants, unless you feel like the coolest person you know in sweatpants, then go and do that. Remember, there is no one description of what beauty, of what style, of what fashion looks like. It is all about self-expression. It's about breaking the rules. But if you again, just like in the rebranding of your life, if you again are like, cool style is only reserved for other people, instead of just exploring those things for yourself, you are always putting admiration, pride, love outside of yourself. What we're doing is we're trying to collect these experiences and bring them to life for us. So put a little bit of effort into your appearance, whatever that looks like for you. I don't know, maybe you wanna do your hair up all curly-like, or maybe you wanna experiment with a different style or a different fashion, whatever it is. Like again, there's no one right way to appear yourself, but as long as it feels good for you. Now, I will say that step one will also help with this because you might have a lot of conditioning, a lot of programming from advertisements, from growing up, and think that you are not beautiful. You are, you're gorgeous, you're stunning, you're amazing, you're hot, you are a gift to this planet. But the more that you talk positively to yourself, the easier this step actually becomes because the more often you'll look in the mirror and feel good about yourself because the dialogue has actually changed internally. Step four is you need to start challenging yourself more. This is such a big part of the become the coolest person you know concept. Becoming the coolest person you know is both a mix of self-acceptance, it's reprogramming yourself to love yourself now, while also taking action towards the life that you desire. And challenging yourself is one way to increase self efficacy. When you feel like you can do things, you will do more things. So the more that you challenge yourself, the more that you break through those fear barriers or those procrastination barriers or the worthiness barriers, the easier it becomes to build momentum and keep taking action. So what's something that you've wanted to try? What's something you've wanted to experience? Go and challenge yourself to do these things. Challenge yourself to step outside of your comfort zone socially. Go challenge yourself to go out for dinner by yourself. Like whatever it might be, but when you are challenging yourself, you are going to feel proud of yourself and feeling proud of yourself is like, again, self-admiration is not, oh, look at me, I'm so hot and beautiful and amazing, even though that's a part of it, but self-admiration, I feel like the coupling word to that is, is pride, is feeling proud of yourself and challenging yourself is the fast-tracked way to feeling proud of yourself. So just right now, let me know in the comments below, what is something that you can do? Small, big, large, medium size, it doesn't matter, but what is something that you can do in the next 24 hours that you've been procrastinating on or holding back on to challenge yourself? Number five, and again, this is another crux of the whole becoming the coolest person you know concept is find your thing. What I mean by that is find a hobby. I know that's so, it sounds so simple, but generally the most profound things are simple. But what's your thing? A part of the becoming the coolest person you know concept for me was really birthed out of when I went through a huge life transformation, I actually started hobbies. I started motorbike riding, I started Muay Thai, I started dancing a lot more, and it was these things that helped me to truly craft out my unique identity. Having hobbies or things that you are pursuing for yourself that mean something to you, whether or not you're good at them, it doesn't really matter to be honest, but like with Muay Thai, for example, when I walk into a gym and I'm faced with, you know, hot bikini body babes or like really big strong men and I feel insecure because like I am not like, 
strong athletic, you know what I mean? I don't have to feel insecure about myself because I have my thing, I have Muay Thai. Like I know that I could do a little bit of shadow boxing and show them what I'm all about, but I don't even have to do that. I don't have to prove myself, it's not about that. I just know that in any environment, it doesn't matter whether I'm the best or the worst or the newest or the just don't even fit in because I have my things that make me me. There's my environments, there's my communities. And the more that you have your things, your places, your little clicks and your little passions, the more that you're going to navigate this world, being able to idolize yourself more again, because you'll feel proud of yourself for challenging yourself and having things that are just for you. Number six is you really need to catch yourself when you are judging other people. You know, what we generally judge in other people is a reflection of something that we are judging within ourselves, whether something that we lack within ourselves or we desire within ourselves. Judgment can sometimes be a positive thing, like jealousy can sometimes be a positive thing because it can show opportunities of something that you wish you could do and there's an opportunity to challenge yourself. But really like when you are coming from the energy of judgment, that's gonna bounce back and forth. You judge others, you feel like they're judging you because you're judging them, so then you judge yourself. It just, it, it really is something that we need to let go of. I know Gabrielle Bernstein has a really good book called The Judgment Detox. I haven't actually read it myself, but my mom did read it and she summarized it to me and she loved it. But really like when we can let go of judgment, on pretty much everything, other people, on nature, on music, on art, on culture, on business, like when we can just really let go of that judgment, it doesn't then become a habit because we have a negative bias towards ourselves. So if judgment is a habit that we have developed, then of course we are going to be consistently judging ourselves as well. So practice the habit of non-judgment and then that will also be reflected back towards you. Number seven is that you need to connect to your inner child more regularly. Let yourself have fun, let yourself play, stop taking everything so seriously, approach the world with more curiosity. I know this is something that people idolize as a fantasy, as something that I can't do that because I've got kids or I've got work or I've got responsibilities, but that's just not true. Like again, this kind of links in with challenging yourself and finding your thing, but just allowing yourself to play a little bit more, allowing yourself to have a little bit more fun. A really concrete example of this is again, like I'm a business mentor. I teach people how to build an extraordinary history making brand, a freedom based business. And I see so many people just taking their business so seriously and then they create so much more work for themselves because when it comes to creating content, it's like if it's not perfect, it's not good enough and it's all laced with judgment and self-criticism. But I often say to my clients, like what would it look like if you just had fun? If you let your inner child come out a little bit, like what would making a reel look like if you were rather than trying to get a result, trying to have fun? What would creating a program look like? What would having a conversation with a client look like? Of course you bring your expertise and your experience into this as well, but I think fun really is the opposite of pressure. I think that when we put expectation and pressure on things to be a certain way, it causes just a really negative experience. Whereas the opposite to that is if we just have fun, if we just go in with no expectations and we have fun and we be free and we be flowy, then obviously we challenge ourselves more, we take more action and our perspective of the situation changes. We view it in a more positive light. It becomes a positive memory, which then goes into that bank of self-pride, self-admiration, and just feeling like our life is a vibe. And then with that, something that is really important, number eight, is to practice non-attachment. Again, I think the expectations that we put on ourselves of needing to look a certain way, needing to achieve a certain thing in a certain timeline, and if we don't, then we're not good enough, we're not worthy enough. It's proof that, you know, that negative thought that told us, wow, well, you shouldn't have tried in the first place, is all from attachment, attachment to results, attachment to expe expectations. If we can practice non-attachment, if we can allow ourselves to just be a little bit more nonchalant in life. Now, that's not saying don't be ambitious. That's not saying be lazy. That's not saying don't try, but practicing non-attachment, allowing to let go of stress and timelines, it allows you to feel like you're progressing forward instead of always missing the mark. Like 
Practicing non-attachment with time, I think is one of the most important things because if you're like, my business must make $10,000 in the next month and then that doesn't happen, but you make eight, the attachment to the $10,000 takes away the celebration of the eight. And so the less that you can attach to certain outcomes and timelines while simultaneously challenging yourself and having fun, you'll still take action and move forward without constantly feeling like you're failing. Another little one, number nine, is to move your body. Humans are designed to move. Get that energy flowing. Stagnant energy is one of the biggest, like I see stagnant energy in the body as like a container for self-criticism, for feeling like negative moods, spiraling down into these self-critical states. One of the best ways to shift out of that is to move your body. I am a self-proclaimed dancepreneur. I love to have a dance party. I love to do exercise, Muay Thai, obviously. I love to move my body. But I really do think that the more that you are moving your body, using your body, again, it's a good way to challenge yourself. It's a good way to feel good about your appearance. It's a good way to cultivate emotional energy, physical energy, just a vibe and a zest for life. And so moving your body in whatever way it looks like for you. You don't have to go to the gym. You don't have to do martial arts. Maybe it's gardening. Maybe it's skating. Maybe it is punching the air. I don't know, whatever you want to do, but just making sure you are prioritizing moving your body so that you can move the energy out of you more efficiently and make space for a more positive perspective. And then the last tip, and honestly, I left this for last because it's probably the most important, but it does summarize everything that I've spoken here today. I probably should have put it first, but it's last. You have to define what cool means for you. What is worth idolizing for you? What is worth admiring? What you love? What a vibe means to you? There is so much conditioning that holds us back from feeling like we are good enough in this lifetime. You have to look like this. You have to do success like this. You have to build a business like this. You have to style yourself like this. Fuck all of that, honestly. Define what cool means to you. It is one of the most rebellious, but yet cathartic and liberating things that you can do in this lifetime. If you can truly define your own version of success, you can define your own timeline, your own style, your own vibe. This will help you to love yourself more, to idolize yourself more, to admire yourself more. There is nothing more charismatic and magnetic than a person who is just vibing through life with themselves, doing their thing, being a rebel, breaking the rules. And honestly, that can be you. You don't have to sit there scrolling on your phone constantly every single day being like, I wish I had that person's life. I wish I had that person's body. I wish I had that person's style. I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy enough. I will never achieve that. When you define what you want to truly achieve in life and have the courage to go after that by changing your perspective, changing your beliefs, changing the way you see yourself, that, that's gonna trump every single personal development book that you've ever read. You know what I mean? Yeah, habits and all of these things, they are great, don't get me wrong. But trust me, when you define what success and what life looks like for you or what you desire it to look like and you have the courage to unapologetically go after that thing without the fear of judgment, everything will change. It really will. That's where the magic happens. That is where you truly become the coolest person you know. All right, that is it for me. I really hope that this helped you in any kind of way. Leave me a comment below. Definitely tell me what kind of things you're going to do to challenge yourself or just, you know, what you took away from this video. I deeply appreciate your comments. I really, really do... I just want more women to idolize themselves. I want more people to become the coolest person they know. I don't understand. If we think about it, well, I know why, I know where it comes from. I think we all know where it comes from, but I think the answer to so many of our problems is the relationship that we have with ourselves. It truly, truly is. Everyone is trying to prove themselves, to better themselves, to be better than others. And these are some of the things that cause so much destruction in our life. And if we can just be satisfied while simultaneously pursuing everything that our heart desires, everything will change. All right, I love you. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today and I'll see you in the next video.